Thank you again for purchasing your VFlex Builder's Choice model. Now today we're going to assemble the Builder's Choice 200 model. Now if you purchase the 100 model, the only difference is uh, your model will not have the motor or the spinning component for this particular application today. But the assembly is uh, in essence completely the same in the absence of those two units. Now, uh, let's make sure we have all of our components before the, we begin this assembly today. We should have our three legs, our three tubing pieces that attach to our tripod. We should have a tripod and a small bracket that goes with that tripod. We should have our six sticks for prompting, our two kicker braces, our spinning component, all of our hardware and our uh, written instructions, our frame, our back net and catch uh, component back here, along with the motor and finally uh, our battery and charger component for that particular model. Now, if you have all of these pieces, you're ready to begin the assembly of this Builder's Choice 200 model. Let's begin with the assembly. Let's take the frame first and deploy it. Now, the easiest way to deploy the frame is by putting the coupler at the top and the coupler at the bottom. And we're gonna press down with a little bit of pressure and spin outwardly at the same time. I wanna make sure my holes are lined up. And if they are, and these are, I'm gonna take my packet of uh, coupler nuts and bolts and I'm going to put into each one of these holes. I'm gonna tighten those down. And once they're tightened, I'll begin to attach the tripod and the legs to this particular piece. Once the bolts have been tightened, I'm going to simply lay the frame aside and I'm going to begin to assemble the tripod and leg section. Just partially assemble it and then we're going to attach the two together. At this time, I'd like to begin the assembly of the tripod. The tripod, there's a small detail that uh, we need to pay attention to when we put this tripod together and it is that there's two holes in one end of the tubing. Now, I wanna put the end with the two holes, put the two holes in the tripod legs. So, I'm gonna place a quarter inch bolt there and a lock nut on the end, and I'll tighten these up just in a moment, but we want that thing to have flexibility so that we can take the top knobs off and fold it up and store it away very neatly. So we've made the legs foldable for that uh, storage component of this particular piece. So I'm gonna ahead, go ahead and put the other two legs on at this time. Okay, they're temporarily put uh, together there, and you can see that the legs fold neatly. Now I'm going to take my other three bolts, I'm gonna stick them through the top holes, and take our plastic knobs, and we're going to screw those on at this time. And that will lock the legs in place. We'll tighten down the lock nuts. Now, we won't put the legs in this particular piece for some time because we wanna be able to work with the, the tripod uh, attached to this particular frame so it's at a height that we can work with easily and put the motor component on, the back piece component on for the catch net, et cetera, et cetera. So we just want to make sure we have our small legs on here, our little tubing parts, and then we'll put the longer legs on later. Now, coming with 
details before I attach the frame to the tripod. Now, the tripod has to be set in a certain direction. The one leg needs to be facing away from you so that the two split legs give some open space to put our spinner attachment to. So make sure it looks just like that right there. And then on the frame, this particular piece has to be on the same side as the rubber bushings. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the bottom of the frame, which has a hole in the center and normally a, a pink sticker that will actually match up with this particular piece. There it is. And we're going to stick that up through there just like that so that it will be similar just like that right there. Then I'm just going to set it right down on top. It'll sit there while I put my lock nut and my washer on and then I'll tighten it down and then I'll begin the assembly of the motor unit. Now before I attach the motor assembly, I want to make sure that I take the front safety bar off of the motor along with the two bushings and I just lay them to the side. Now to put the motor on, I want the motor to be on the back side which is the same side as our attachment at the bottom that we just put on and then our rubber bushings need to be on that back side as well. Now I'm going to take this motor, I'm going to stick through the net approximately two squares down. And I'm just going to take it under, take it back on top, and I'm going to bolt it to the top with the, with the nuts and the bolts that I have and the rubber bushings, and I'll secure all of that, and then we'll come back and move straight on into the other part of the assembly. Now that I have the motor attached, I'm going to put the safety bar back across the front. Put my rubber bushings on. That completes the attachment of the motor to the Our frame. Our next step consists of putting the spinning device onto the motor. We're going to take the little hook, simply hook it through at the top, and then at the bottom there are a couple of eye bolts, and we're going to simply just put those in to our receiver at the bottom. Once the ring is attached to the motor and to the bottom component, we want to put our prompting sticks in. So we're just going to take uh, the sticks. Stick them through the rubber bushings. They have a cotter key on the end. It keeps them from sliding all the way through the bushings.
Now that completes that particular portion of the assembly. Now, all we need to do now is just put our extension bars on the top, attach our uh, catch net on the back, and we'll be ready to do some V-place. Now we're going to attach our extension bars so they'll receive the netting on the back. Use the color-coded holes. Make sure they're good and tight. And then we'll attach the back bar uh, to that with the catch net and the black pad. Now we want to make sure that the black pad is on the back side. So we'll just set it up. Let it rest on top right there while I bolt it together. Finally, our kick brace. It has several holes for adjustments so that the legs can be moved up and down for height adjustments with this piece. Now, uh, they are color coded, so make sure you get the color codes correct on this particular bar making sure that this black pad is on the back side of the net. Now that completes the frame assembly of this complete unit for the Fielder's Choice 200 model. Now, as you begin to fluctuate it up and down, don't forget you have three longer legs that will insert into the tubing on the bottom. And you can adjust that height by about 30 inches. So if you have little league kids, you can work at this height. If you have big guys, you can put the legs in and extend this thing. I'm gonna take you through the motor components here just a little bit. So we have a controller that has a toggle switch for left and right, and an on and off switch and a speed switch on this particular unit right here. And the battery has an off and on button right here. When you turn it on, it turns red. Now don't forget that when you charge this battery, it needs to be in the on position, on position. We'll turn it on, we'll turn this on, then we hit the toggle, and we get our spinner. That completes the assembly of the V-Flex Builder's Choice 200 model. Now, don't forget if you have the 100 model that the only thing that's lacking is the motor and the spinning component. Everything else is identical. And I'd like to thank you for purchasing your V-Flex Building Choice model. It's going to be a great addition to the defensive drills that you do every day. So again, thank you from uh, everybody here at VFlex for being part of VFlex and choosing us for your implicit needs.